to recommend to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to observe by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many secret favors of the Almighty God, especially by affording them the opportunity peaceably to establish a form of government for the safety and happiness of the church, I, I read that and it, it makes me makes me just you know, appreciate being American. It, it makes me appreciate all these things. But more than anything else, I also want to make sure that my allegiance is to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I go back and I, I look at throughout the Bible. And you, know, you don't have to look very far, and you don't have to look very hard to find verse after verse after verse in the Bible about the importance of giving thanks to the Lord. In the book of Psalms of the Old Testament, it talks about this. It says, I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify his name with thanksgiving. Church, that's what we should do. We should be magnifying the name of God with thanksgiving. In 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 34, the Bible says this. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love, it is forever. Church, that means his unconditional love for us and do this forever. God is the same yesterday, today, forever. It does not change. And we move over to the New Testament. In the New Testament, Philippians chapter 4, verse number 6, it says this. The church, think about this, and this is where we really should dwell as a church. It says, But do not be anxious about anything, but in everything. Prayer and supplication and thanksgiving. Let me request to be with you, God. Church, because He hears our prayers. The church, He hears our prayers. So these these are the things, and this is just I just picked three out that, that I that I enjoy reading. And the church, as we as we move into this Thanksgiving holiday, really think back. He's, he's done so much for us, and even to the point that He gave His only begotten Son to be the atoning sacrifice. Jesus went to the cross of Calvary and paid a penalty that you and I could not pay. And because of that, we have the opportunity to have eternal life and to live with Him forever. Church, that's the good news. That's the good news in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you will stand as we as we go to the prayer, and we're also going to give you the opportunity to, to worship and giving of our tithes and offerings this morning. Again, this is not something that that, uh, that we just we want you to not out of obligation, but simply out because of love that you have to do and your the desire that you have to obey and to live according to this word. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. God, we thank you for the opportunity to come and the freedom that we have in coming to worship today. And Father, I just pray that your blessings will be upon our church. God, I pray that your blessings will be upon our families. And Father, I pray that we can just reflect back throughout this past year and throughout our whole lives and just remember that you have given to us, all the blessings. And Father, today I just pray, God, that from all of my heart, Lord, that we would desire to grow closer to you. Father, that we would, as we read your word, read about the importance of praise and thanksgiving, that, Lord, it just would become natural because we understand who you are and we understand your character. Father, we thank you for your unconditional love. Father, today, God, as we continue in this service, Lord, we just pray that, Lord, that you would give us the morning every word that we speak, God, every song that we sing, God, that we would just love you, and God, that we would glorify you and for your kingdom. Lord, again, we just pray that your blessing would be upon our church and upon our communities as we pray this prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.
Church, if you have your tithes this morning, please put them in the wall. Transgressions crushed for our sins. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. By his wounds, by his wounds, we are healed. He was pierced for our transgressions. Rush for our sins, punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, by his wounds, we are healed. We are healed by. Oh, 
cross this morning. You know, I was thinking as we are playing there, singing, you know, of course, Thanksgiving's uh, just a few days away, but Thanksgiving wouldn't be Thanksgiving without that old rugged cross. Take away everything else. It's all about the old rugged cross this morning. Amen. 
We don't have a promise of heaven without that old rugged cross this morning. I could even say we may not have much to be thankful for if it wasn't for that old rugged cross. But this morning I want to say I'm thankful. I'm thankful to my Lord. I'm thankful to my Savior. I'm thankful for that old rugged cross this morning. Can we just take a moment and just worship the Lord and just thank Him for that, Lord. We love you, we praise you, we thank you. Lord, thank you for that cross this morning. Thank you for that old rugged, wooden, full of splinter cross that you prepared your entire life for and that you allowed them to nail you to that cross, that wooden cross. Thank you for the sacrifice. Thank you for the price that you paid that we can be saved this morning. Lord, we're thankful for the whole broken cross. We cherish you. Let us never forget the sacrifice and the price that was paid that we can be saved this morning. Father, we thank you. We worship we bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. We claim to have a broken cross this morning. Amen. If you're grateful for the old rubber cross this morning, can we just give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning? Just let him know that we love him. We appreciate him. Amen. This is God good this morning. Thank you, worship team. Another uh, great day of worship. Amen. Aren't you glad for our worship team? Thankful for them. Amen. Go ahead. Let him know. Amen. I'm glad that you're here this morning. <laughs> of course, we know we're missing several this morning for sickness and some are traveling out of town this morning but i'm glad you're here amen, amen. and more than anything i'm glad the lord's here because he promises when two or three are gathered together in his name he says i will be there in the midst amen, amen. so i'm glad that he's here we welcome his holy spirit this morning amen um just want to uh ask you if you have your bibles this morning to Turn to Psalm chapter 100. Psalm chapter 100. I don't know if y'all could uh, see me back there on the drones when Brother John was up here, but he was dancing all around. I, <laughs> I'm like, he's about to preach it. I know he is. <laughs> don't you appreciate Brother John? Amen. I do. You just... You just kind of laugh at yourself and, and, and just snicker at the Lord and say, Lord, it, it's just confirmation for, you know, what you're about to say. And um, you just say, thank you, Lord. Psalm 100, if you have your place, would you stand for a moment and let's read it together in the presence of the Lord. Psalm 100 says, verse 1, make a joyful shout to the Lord all you lame. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. And so I say amen there. Amen. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. This morning I want to speak to us for just a few moments on this thought. Giving thanks always. Giving thanks always. Would you bow your head and pray with me for just a moment? And let's ask the Lord's blessing upon you these next few moments of time. Father, we love you. We praise you. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you. Lord, for your presence. We thank you for your anointing. Lord, we thank you for the, the sacrifice that you made 
that we can be here this morning to lift up holy hands and to lift up our voices in triumph and to proclaim that the Lord, He is good. And Father, for the next few moments, I pray that you just bless me, help me, anoint me, Lord. Lord, as I preach your word this morning, I pray, God, that you would help me. Lord, I need your help always, Father, and I just pray, God, that you would help me one more time this morning. Lord, that you would anoint each and every one of us, Lord, not only to hear, but to receive and to also apply to our life the word of God this morning. And Father, I pray for your blessing. I pray, God, that you open up the windows of heaven and pour out your blessing this morning upon your people. Lord, bless those that are sick. Bless those that are, are, are traveling this morning. Lord, we pray for safety. We pray for healing. And Lord, we pray, God, that you have your way in all things. Lord, and we just pray all these things in Jesus' holy and wonderful name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. As you're being seated, tell somebody, give thanks always. Giving thanks always. You know, what do you think about when you think about Thanksgiving? Eating turkey or ham, football games, a long weekend, Black Friday shopping, the first Thanksgiving, or being with family and friends. Those are all good. Those are all wonderful things to think about and to celebrate, right? But Thanksgiving is much more than all of these things. True Thanksgiving is not just a day for food or football or family. It's not just a holiday that we, we celebrate or we set aside every fourth th Thursday in November. For God's people, every day should be a day of Thanksgiving, amen? Just like Brother John said. Every day of our lives should be a day of thanksgiving. We shouldn't just set aside one day out of a year. We shouldn't set aside a week or a month or even a weekend. Every day should be a day of thanksgiving to the Lord. Would you say amen there? Amen. Thanksgiving Day is a distinctive holiday. It doesn't celebrate a battle. It doesn't celebrate a birthday. It doesn't, it doesn't celebrate anything like that. It is simply a day set aside to express our thanks to the Lord. Again, as Brother John uh, told us this morning, in 1789, George Washington made a public proclamation saying, it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, to be grateful for his benefits, to humbly to implore his protection and favor. And he recommended and assigned Thursday, the 26th of November, 1789, to be a day of thanksgiving. Of course, we know the story of the pilgrims. When they arrived in 1621, the story of the pilgrims and how the pilgrims and the Indians had the first Thanksgiving feast in 1621, long before George Washington's proclamation. But even earlier than 1621, we find people offering up thanks to God. Here in the Old Testament, and what, what is found, if you looked in, if you actually looked in your Bible, it's probably on your phone, you see the very beginning of, of this verse in Psalm 100 says that this is a song of Thanksgiving. Anybody see that in their Bible or in their, their phone? That Psalm 100 is a song of Thanksgiving. It is subtitled a Psalm of Thanksgiving. It is an invitation to join together to acknowledge the great things that God has done. Let me ask somebody something this morning. Has God done anything in your life? Come on. Has he done anything? You know, if, if, if you say, well, God hasn't done much for me lately, let me ask you something. Are you breathing? Amen. Is your heart beating this morning? Amen? Amen? So don't sit there and tell me that God hasn't done nothing for you. You're not hooked to a machine this morning. Come on. Amen. We're here to celebrate. We're here to uh, acknowledge and to worship 
the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we're doing that, not hooked to a machine, not hooked up to, to anything like that. We're breathing, our heart is beating. I think we got something to be thankful about. Amen? Amen. Amen. Would you join me in that? Yes. Not only does Psalm 100 call us to praise the Lord with thanksgiving, but it also describes to us the nature of thanksgiving. In this psalm, <clears throat> this morning, I want to point out quickly five words that describe the essence of thanksgiving. And the first word this morning I want to point out is found in Psalm 100, verse 1. And that word is joy. Joy. Somebody said, I think I read it down the street, the church down the street, uh, on their board there, that you it's hard to have Thanksgiving if you don't have joy. Amen. That Thanksgiving is the seed of joy, and to have joy to, to resonate and to live in our own lives. <coughs> Excuse me. Psalm 100 verse 1 again says, make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Now listen. Okay, if I step on a toe or two. Amen. We have no problem shouting for the Gators or the Seminoles or any other Alabama Crimson Tide or whatever football team you, you celebrate that you follow. We have no trouble maybe shouting for our team that's in the Super Bowl. But many times in churches across America, we have trouble even whispering the, the name of Jesus. Right. Let alone shout it. Amen. Yes. Come on, somebody. Amen. Especially when we leave the four walls of this church, we have trouble. Uh, uh, you know, We can talk all day long about the Gators or the Seminoles or or Crimson Tide, or whatever it might be. We don't have no trouble talking about that all day long. But when it comes to Jesus, we clam up. Come on now. I saw myself on a tour too. Right? And so this morning, I want to repeat what Psalm 100 says. Make a joyful shout to the Lord. All you lands. We don't have a any trouble raising our voice for our favorite team. Maybe if, we, if we're even at the Taylor uh, County football game, we don't mind uh, uh, giving a shout or two for our, our, our Bulldogs, do we? Amen. But how about for our Jesus? Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. How many times have we shouted for the Lord? How many times have we even talked about the Lord more than a whisper? More than trying to Walk away. Make a joyful shout to the Lord. All you lands. Our lives are meant to be a joyful call for God. God wants us to be excited about who he is. Now come on somebody. If you can't get excited about who Jesus is, maybe we need to check the heartbeat. Because he, we sang about it, died, <coughs> excuse me, on an old rugged cross so that we could be saved. And the last part of that, I think it's the chorus of that song, that we would trade it for crowns. Come on, somebody, we got crowns that are waiting for us in heaven. Now, if, 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 if you can't shout a, a shout of joy that we're going to heaven, Again, we might need to get your heart checked. Amen. That we are not excited about serving God. Whatever he might ask us to do, whatever he, 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 he may direct us to do. I want us to check ourselves. Are we excited about it? And I know everything that he directs us to do. We may not be happy about it. Come on, somebody. We may not even be excited about it. But we have excitement about serving him. We have joy about serving him. 
You know, and it's not, it's not, and you've heard me say this before, it's not about our mood that day. It's not being, it's not about being happy. We're not always happy. But even when we're not happy, we can have joy. When things aren't going well, come on, somebody. Anybody breathing this morning? We, we're all going through storms at some point or another. Whenever, we may not be happy about it, but we can't lose our joy. The devil can't steal our joy. Only we can give our joy away. Come on. Turn that frown upside down. Amen. We need to joyfully shout praises to God. You know why? Because we know what the back of the book says. And we have the victory. And we may feel like we're losing the battle, but can I reassure you and remind each and every one of us that we may feel like we're losing the battle, but we're going to win the war Amen. through Jesus Christ. And yes, we may be going through a battle, and again, it may, not, it may not be very happy about it, but we should have joy knowing that God is in control. God is in control, and we win the war. We need to be filled with joy and shout about it, because yes, again, we may be in the midst of a battle, but we do win. And we have victory. And joy lies in victory. But secondly, the second word I want to point out is found in Psalm 100, verse 2. Where that word is gladness. Look at your neighbor, tell him gladness. It says, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with sin. You know, there is a huge difference between gladness and sadness. Would you agree with that? When we come before the Lord, we should come to Him with gladness and joy, not sadness and misery. But can I tell you, I don't know why the Lord directs us to, to do this. But can I tell you, there's, there are people even across this, this nation, across churches, that they go to a Sunday morning service like it's a funeral. Like Brother John said, gloom and doom. If I, if I didn't have bad luck, I wouldn't have any luck at all. Come on, somebody. And you got somebody in the world looking and saying, you know what, I want to be just like them. I doubt it. Come on, somebody. Y'all with me? If, if, if I knew a Christian that looked like he was sucking lemons all the time, I'm not sure if I want to be a Christian if I'm not a Christian. <coughs> They're walking around all the time sad and in misery. I'm not sure if I want that. But you know that Jesus brought joy. He brought gladness. He brought love. He brought mercy. He brought grace. He brought life. He brought victory to each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. There are times that, that there are times maybe we don't even feel like coming on a Sunday morning. We may not feel like getting up and going to the house of the Lord. But I can guarantee you that you, you may not feel like it all the way, but I'll guarantee you that when you get here, if you come with an open heart, an open mind, that God will touch you, help you, change you. And again, like I said, turn that frown upside down. Turn that sadness to gladness. Because that's just what he does. The truth is, we need to come in on Sunday morning with joy and gladness and expectation in our hearts. Not, uh, well, I guess I'll give it another hour and a half this week. Come on, somebody. Yeah. But hey, God, what do you want to do with me this week? Amen. What do you want to do with me this week? <clears throat> what do you want to do with me this week? You know, <laughs> I'm just going to say it. I drive that bus 
Just read the notes. Just read the notes. I drive that bus, and I get a kid that will come up or come from the seat and say, Hey, so-and-so is doing this. If I know I'm going on. Hey, so-and-so is doing that. Hey, so-and-so is touching me. Hey, they're touching me, right? And unfortunately, we have the same issue in churches sometimes. Hey, so-and-so is doing this. Hey, so-and-so is doing that. But can I give some advice that I give them little kids? Mind your own business. Because your business is you and Jesus. Come on, somebody. Stop looking around. Stop looking at other people. Start looking to Jesus. And if we... we the church world, and, and no, I'm not picking on Northside. I'm talking about the church world in general. If we, the church world in general, will get our eyes off other people and put our eyes back on Jesus, how powerful would the church be? Amen. Come on, somebody. The church, in my opinion, the church loses the power because it stops looking to Jesus and starts looking at everybody else. We need to get our eyes back on Jesus. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he's living whatever men may say. I see, I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and he talks with me. Along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Now let me ask us something. Us. If Jesus lives in our heart, do we have any right to be sad? Do we have any right not to be joyful? If Jesus lives in our heart today, Nicole C. Mullen says in her song, I know my Redeemer lives because I talked to him this morning. Amen. Have we talked to him this morning? When we come before the Lord, we ought to do it with gladness. Third word, dependence. Verse 3, know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. This verse shows three roles of God. God is our Lord. We are to make him our ruler, our master, the Lord of our lives. And I told you this before, but I'm going to tell you this again. <clears throat> I'm going to give you some, some deep theological knowledge. Are you all ready? Y'all ready? Wait that minute, you ready? God is God and we are not. Amen. If we would do good to remember that, we would do good. Come on, somebody. God is God and we are not. We are not masters of the universe. We are not masters of anything. God is God and we are not. God told Moses, I am who I am. We have no more control over God than we do the weather. I don't know about you, but I can't make it rain, and I can't make the sun shine. All I can do is bring my umbrella or bring my sunglasses. Because God is God, and I am not. And I can't control Him, but He does control me. Amen? God is our Lord. God is our Creator. You know, I was thinking about this. You know, Sister Wendy, she's a wonderful cook. I'm telling you, you can look at me and tell that she can cook up anything. She can find a recipe on Facebook, and, 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 and she, can, she can whip it up. She can bake whatever she wants to bake. And so I was thinking about this this week as, as I was preparing. I, I said, well, it's like she makes a batch of cookies, delicious cookies. And so she's the creator of those cookies. And then those cookies look at her and say, no, I don't want to get eight. 
The cookies have no choice. They're going to get eight. Come on, somebody. And that's what we are. We are God's creation. He is the creator. It's like us saying to the creator, no, I don't, I don't want to do that. Come on. No, I don't want to do that. No, no, no. No, God. No, I want you to do this. And we try to compromise. And we try to tell God what to do. It's just, it's just like the cookies trying to tell us, I don't want to get egg. It ain't going to do no good, is it? If you create something, you are greater than what you have created. You have every right. If she wants to throw those cookies away in the garbage, then she has that right. If she wants to eat them, share them, throw them out in the yard, give them to the dogs. She's the creator. And the creation has no say over what happens. Y'all with me this morning? It is he who has made us and we not ourselves. But also God is our Lord, God is our creator, God is our shepherd. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. God guides us into places of security, plenty, and rest. Psalm 23, 1 through 3 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides the still waters. He restores my soul. Francis Chan said that he is the shepherd. And all we need to be is dumb sheep and follow him who follows the voice of the shepherd and he will lead us. You don't see the sheep looking at the shepherd and saying, nah, I don't think I want to go that way. Right? The sheep, <coughs> excuse me, the sheep follow the voice of the shepherd. If we are created, he is the creator. If we are the sheep, he is the shepherd. If we enter his courts, he is our king. If we serve him, he is our master. I am dependent on God. He created even the air that I breathe. He knows every hair on my head. He knows every beat of my heart. And I thank him because he is God and I am dependent on him. The fourth word is thankful. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, verse 4. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. You can't give thanks unless you are thankful. Thanksgiving is what flows out of a thankful heart. You know, if you look again in Luke chapter 17, there's an interesting story there of ten lepers that Jesus, these ten lepers asked Jesus as he's coming by to heal them. And Jesus says, go, and as you go, you'll be healed. Go to the temple. And so they all went. Ten of them went. And as ten of them went, the Bible says, and you go back and read it, that as all ten of them went, all ten of them were healed. All of them. All ten. But only one turned back, came to God, came to Jesus, and, said, and fell at his feet and thanked him for healing. And Jesus said, wasn't there ten? What happened to the other nine? The other nine got healed and took off. But only one turned. And so I, I said that to say this. God recognizes thankfulness. He said, there, wasn't there ten? Where's the other nine? But weren't they healed? I'm paraphrasing. Weren't they healed? I don't know, Master. But I'm here. And I'm thankful that you healed me. We need to have thankful hearts. We need to remember the old rugged cross. We need to remember the price and the sacrifice that Jesus made. He didn't just go on that, that rugged cross so that we could be saved. He went on that so we could be healed. That we could have peace. That we could be victorious. That we could live a life 
honoring God to serve him in our life. And so we need to be thankful for what God has done for us. Is anybody thankful for what God has done for us? You know, I was thinking about this again, preparing, and, and, and Brother Michael, he's, he's one of the best men you'll ever meet. And every time I talk to Brother Michael, whether he's out here mowing and sweating to death, or, you know, 100 degrees outside, and we really appreciate that. Anytime you talk to Brother Michael, doesn't matter what's going on. He says, I'm blessed. He says, I'm with 100 degrees and pouring out. He says, oh, it's hot out here, but I'm blessed. And I love to talk to, to men and women like that, that, that they are encouragers. And yeah, I'm sweating to death and I'm working and, and I'm doing all of this, but God has blessed me. I'm thankful for his blessing. And all of us this morning, are we thankful? We're blessed people. We are blessed people. If you have a nickel in your pocket, you are blessed probably more than 90% of the world population. If you have a roof over your head, if you have food to eat, if you're if you're you've got Thanksgiving planned on Thursday and you're plan and you know you got food to eat, you are we are blessed. That we can come to a church that, that is has AC and, and cushioned pews. We are blessed. We are blessed people. And we, we may hate our job, but if we have a job, we are blessed. Amen? We are blessed. Because there's many people that don't have a job. There's many people that don't have a roof over their head. There's many people that don't, don't know what they're going to eat come Thursday. Even, maybe even today they don't know what they're going to eat. You know, I was, I was uh, just looking on Facebook and there was two food bank, well, food banks, I guess you want to call it food bank, two churches that work with food banks, uh, First Assembly and the Methodist yesterday. And they were taking donations and turkeys and things throughout this, these last couple of weeks. And both of them showed pictures of lines of cars that were lined up to get, a, you know, things for Thursday, for Thanksgiving. And that, you know, it kind of breaks your heart. It's, it, it, it's good because the, the, we're doing things for the community, but it kind of breaks your heart that there's a whole line of people that is in that kind of need. Amen? And, and I'm thankful that, that we're able to, to meet the needs of, of the community and, and some of these families. But I'm thankful don't let us forget what God has done for each and every one of us. Amen? That he saved us. He filled us. He healed us. He provides for us. He protects us. And he uses us. Amen? And then last word, last word in closing is gratitude. Gratitude. You may say, hey, what's the difference between being thankful and being grateful? Gratitude is a state of being, and thankfulness expresses that gratitude. One is about a feeling, whereas the other is indeed about expression. Out of gratitude, we are thankful. Out of being grateful, comes thankfulness. Amen? Psalm 100 verse 5. For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endures to all generations. Three reasons to be grateful. The Lord is good, the Lord's mercy is everlasting, the Lord's truth endures forever. I don't know about you, but I am grateful for the Lord, Lord's mercy and for the Lord's grace. I don't know where I would be if he didn't save me. I might be dead. I mean, I don't know where I would be. I might be in jail. I don't know where I would be if it wasn't for the Lord, his mercy, his grace. 
his goodness, and his truth that endures forever. Our praise, our thanksgiving, our worship needs to be directed to God. We need to live in an attitude of gratitude and be thankful for what he has done and what he is doing. Again, as we go back to the very first part of this message, we're not to live a, a month of Thanksgiving. You know, many people, and there's nothing wrong with that. They, they put November a month of Thanksgiving, and each day maybe they list what they're thankful. Nothing wrong with that. But it should extend even farther than that. It should be a year of thanksgiving. It should be a year of gratitude. Every day, we are thankful. We, we are grateful for what God has done in our lives. And what, for what not only He has done, but I don't think He's done yet. But what He's doing, present tense. I saw this quote this, this week and, and I wanted to share it. It's hard to be hateful when you are grateful. Amen. It's hard to be hateful when you are grateful. Come on, somebody. Boy, if we would just live that. If we would just be grateful to the Lord and, and all of his blessings and what he has done and what he is doing. All the days of our life, not just this month, not just this week, but if we would be grateful, we would stop looking at other people. We would stop looking around at even circumstance, and we would be grateful for what He has done, what He has done, and what He is doing. Amen. So this Thanksgiving, with all the preparations and the events. The excitement, my prayer, my hope is that God is thankful. That He, that we are grateful. That we have joy and gladness with thanks, thankfulness and gratitude. And with a heart that is dependent on Him. I mean, again, the truth of the matter is, we can't even take our next breath without Him. You know, there's an old song, and I, I had a little bit of trouble singing it when it first came out. But it's talking about, I need you more than the, the air I breathe. It's probably a 30 year song. I need you more than the air I breathe. And I said, How can we need God more than the air we breathe? We'd be dead, right? But once I thought about it and thought about it, it's true. Because God, without God, we wouldn't have air to breathe. Without God, we wouldn't have our next breath. So yeah, we need Him more than even the air we breathe. But not only that, let us be thankful for the people that God has blessed us with. Our family, our friends, our church family. And show them gratitude and thankfulness. You know, 1 Thessalonians 5.18 tells us, and you've heard me say this before. And everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. That verse says in. See that first word? In everything. It doesn't say for everything. I'm telling you, I am not thankful for the COVID. I am not thankful for what's going on in our nation. But I know that in it, in COVID, in all of these things that are happening, that I can give thanks to the Lord. Because I trust Him. I trust Him. I trust that he has a plan. I trust that he has a purpose through it all. I, I don't know what it is. I, I really don't. But I know I'm, I'm not thankful for it. But I know in it. 
and even bringing it down home. I'm not thankful for some of the things that may be happening in my family, some of the things, some of the storms that are happening in my life. But I'm thankful in them, knowing that God is in full control. Amen? He is always in control. We may not be thankful for the storm, but we can be thankful in the storm. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you, God. Lord, help us, Lord, to Lord, have an attitude of gratitude. Help us, Lord, to have a joyful heart, a glad, a glad heart, to serve you as we are dependent on you, even more than our next breath, God. Help us, Lord, to see you, to thank you, to keep you first in all that we do. Lord, to be thankful, to be grateful. Lord, we love you. And we are thankful for you and all that you have done in our lives, in our individual lives, in our family, in our church, in our community. Lord, we're thankful. And we're grateful for Jesus. We're thankful for salvation. We're thankful for healing. We're thankful for your deliverance. We're thankful for your grace and your mercy. We're thankful for your peace. We're thankful for the many blessings that you have poured upon us. Lord, we're thankful that even in a storm, we can give thanks to you. Lord, we praise you this morning. We worship you with a joyful heart and a heart full of gratefulness. We love you and we praise you. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to take just a moment to have a, a time of communion. Um, I think I got a little, I like to call it a COVID communion cup for everybody this morning. Um, you can just do it at your seats if you like. If you'd like to come forward, you can do that also. I'm going to ask us just to stand as we partake. I'm going to read just a couple of verses and then we'll partake of that. Give me just a second. Let me prepare mine. Go ahead and prepare yours if you like. Everybody ready? Let me read a couple verses here. First Corinthians chapter 11. The Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me. We'll take the bread and let's take up the bread. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your body that was broken for us. Thank you for your body that was broken so that we could be healed, that by your stripes we are healed. Lord, we thank you for that this morning. We thank you not only for healing of our physical bodies, but Lord, for healing of our minds and our spirits, healing of our emotions, healing of our families, healing of our marriages. Lord, heal upon each and every family each and every person. We thank you for that message. We thank you, Lord, for your body. 
God's will. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Go ahead and take over the cup. Lord, thank you for the blood. Thank you for your blood that was shed on that old rugged cross. Thank you for your blood that was shed for me that I could be redeemed. Thank you, Lord, for that blood sacrifice that, re that brings redemption to each and every one. Lord, we're thankful for the body. We're thankful for your blood. We're thankful, God, for that old cross. But Lord, more than anything, we're thankful that on that third day, you rose again. And today, you are praying for us at the right hand of the Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let us never forget. Let us never take for granted the body and your blood that was broken and that spilled blood for us. That we could be saved. That we could be redeemed. Lord, I'm thankful for you this morning. With a joyful heart, a heart of gladness, with a grateful, thankful, heart that's dependent on you. Lord, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice for each and every one of us this morning. Lord, I'm thankful for a precious, faithful people that are here to celebrate you this morning. And Father, I pray, Lord, for each person. I pray your blessing. I pray, God, that you would touch and bless and move in each family. Lord, that you would help us, God, to, to stay focused on you, to live a life of gratefulness, a life of thanksgiving to our Lord and to our Savior. Fathers, we leave this place, I pray for protection. Lord, that you would protect us from all harm, evil, illness, disease. Lord, that you would touch us and you would help and all that we do. Lord, as we celebrate with family, we celebrate with friends this week. God, I pray you protect us. Be with us. As some may travel, you'll travel in mercy as we pray. Lord, we lift up Evan to you this morning. Lord, this young man needs a heart transplant. And God, we pray, Lord, that, that your will be done, that you would touch him, heal him, Lord, that it doesn't even have to be done, Lord, but we pray, Lord, that the right heart would, would come forward. Lord, we pray for those that are dealing with COVID this morning. Lord, we pray for your strength. We pray for your touch. We pray for your healing. In Jesus' name. Lord, go with us. Go before us. Go behind us. Lead us. Guide us. Help us. Open up doors of opportunity, Lord, that we could share the good news with others. Lord, even with our family as we gather this, this week. Help us, Father. To have wisdom. Help us to have the right words. God, we love you. We praise you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Right before we're dismissed, we want to pray for, um, as we know, Sister Bonnie. It's making mass, and, and every mass she puts a little, little heart, uh, like a filter heart, and she's out of them. And we're going to, you know, continue to anoint them. So Brother Theron's going to bring them, and let's anoint these. These are possibly mass that could be going to the Navajo Nation, as we talked about.
also local and wherever they may go, wherever they may land. God knows. But let's anoint these and let's pray that God would anoint them and touch them and whatever, whoever gets them, maybe, maybe your neighbor, maybe somebody across the nation, maybe somebody across the world, but that God would protect them and God would speak to them. God could do anything, amen? I believe that. And so let's anoint them. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be able to anoint these, these hearts, Lord, as they go to Mass, to be able to go to people, possibly across the world. Father, we pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to go forward. Lord, whoever may receive them, I pray, Lord, for a special anointing upon them. Lord, we pray that you will protect them. Lord, you would be with them. And God, Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you would just speak to them. Well, however, however you want to do it. Lord, it may be, you may use an animal, you may use a, an angel, you may use a person, you may use a situation. But Lord, I pray, God, especially if those are, are lost, Lord, we pray, God, for salvation. We pray, God, for healing. We pray for protection. Lord, we pray you would anoint these in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for Sister Bobby that's putting in the work. Lord, using her talents for you. Father, we pray, God, for anointing upon her, a blessing that you touch her and help her, Lord, as she continues on in the work. Lord, we know, God, that you have your hand upon all of us. Lord, and we just pray, God, for your touch. Thank you, Lord, we pray. Thank you for all that you do. Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless y'all. We love you. Hope everyone has a wonderful Thanksgiving day, holiday, weekend, whatever it might be. We love you. Appreciate you.